one of my funeral director guys said, hey, look, you've got to make this better. You, there's something you have to do. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not really interested in messing with dead things or people's ashes. Thanks anyway. Well, I've been making cremation keepsakes for about 13 years. And it all started, I had a crazy bunch of funeral director friends. And when the cremation rate started to rise, all that was available back then were these like really terrible vials that were machined very poorly and the lids didn't fit the bottom and basically you had a lot of big man funeral directors with big man fingers and then they had to get little tiny ashes through a little tiny funnel into a little tiny <laughs> capsule and then they had to get glue because the lid didn't match the bottom and it was just a mess. And so he goes, Michelle, no, you've really got to help us. I said, okay. My customers get ashes to me and I usually just tell them like a half of a teaspoon in a little Ziploc baggie and they usually either overnight it um, or priority mail so that it has like a tracking number. You don't want to lose it through the mail. And I can shape the cremains into pretty much anything you want. I basically offer, you can have them just kind of scattered in the middle, you can have a spiral, you can have a heart. I've done stars, I've done uh, hummingbirds. I've cut up all the glass, I, ha I assemble all of my pieces, and then I take my cremains, I put them on the, on the tablet, and then I shape it into whatever shape they want. I put the top layer of the glass on and I put it in the kiln, fire it, I take it out the next day, and then I polish up the silver part, and then I add the bale, and then put it on the chain. I sign the back of it, and then I wrap those up. I put it in my packaging and ship it out the next day. Morning jewelry has a long history, and it, it really started with, they used to take the hair from their deceased family members and they would make bracelets, they would braid it, and like it's it's really back from Victorian times. And you can go back and look and they would like braid these little braids and put them in like a almost like a glass capsule and wear them as brooches. It's kind of really the beginning of it. I started out as a goldsmith many years ago working in <laughs> precious gems and fine metal and um, I started working in glass and designing jewelry when um, my husband and I started a family many years, like 25 years ago. Yeah, this is my personal piece. My father's, his ashes are fired onto the back in a little heart shape. Pretty much I did something for all of my family members who were interested in having a little piece of my dad. By making cremation jewelry and the keepsakes that I do, I really bring a lot of people some comfort, maybe a little closure, and just kind of nursing them through the grief process because it's really long and it's really hard. Well, the cremation rate is going up in the U.S. It started about, I'd say 10, 12 years ago. You think about this, like the baby boomers are, they're taking care of their parents. Their parents are passing away. They don't really want to pay for the $12,000 caskets and the really expensive traditional burials like they used to. Nobody really wants a burial plot to be the last piece of real estate that they own. Land is at a premium and the cremation rate is pretty much through the roof. The price disparity between cremation and direct burial and the whole funeral thing is huge. My cremation keepsakes, I kind of targeted three price points only because like, I believe that everybody should be able to have nice things and access to everything. I keep my spirits up every day because I am thankful to be here. My father taught me a long time ago that like when you wake up, um, you have two choices. You can be happy or you can be a miserable cow. And by the way, nobody really likes a miserable cow. So you're gonna choose happiness every day. 